Uh, Cam, <laughs> like like Inspector Deck, the legend, the guy said, uh, he just bombed atomically in the first half, especially in the first quarter. With 16 points on perfect shooting from the field, including four for four from from deep in the first quarter, um, and just barely like under seven minutes, no less. And then Chris Paul had five assists in the first quarter, uh, with no turnovers. And he also had some um some secondary assists that really really just stretched and compromised the. Hornets defense. So I wanted to go ahead and dive into a handful of the reps between those two in tandem as well as in the independent of each other. All right, this first play we're going to see here is going to be CP3 um, posting up here on the, um, it looks like a mid post touch, uh, essentially where a logo would be in retro basketball courts. Um, in the half court, they would have like a team embleming in this spot on the floor. So they call this logo pick and roll. So after the catch, we're going to see Mikael get the flare. And then it's going to be Bismack stepping up to set a screen. But you also see here, Bismack's man, Mason Plumley is not in traditional drop coverage. He's going to be putting pressure on the ball on the outer third of the floor. Something that the Charlotte Hornets were consistently doing last night, um, especially on Chris Paul. And because of the extra attention that CP3 got, he, his processing speed was instantly, instantly moving. He sees Plumley coming from the strong side on the screen, so he ends up using the screen to distance himself away from that, and that automatically is going to start putting the Hornets defense in rotation, and the dominoes are going to fall here. As we see, it's now four versus three here on the other side of the floor, and he's going to go ahead and engage the nil help from McDaniels, kick it to McHale. As that happens, then we shift our focus to the second side here in the corner, the opposite side of, of the court from where Chris started. It's going to be a two versus one essentially with Tory Craig and Cam Johnson against PJ Washington. And we're going to see a nice and very astute pin in screen here from Tory Craig, accompanied by a lift or a shake from Cam Johnson from the corner to a little below the free throw line extended for separation. And that ends up being a wide open three for Cam Joe, the first of many. All right, and on this next rep here, we're going to see. Chris getting off it quick again. So he's going to see, again, on the outer third, this time on the opposite side of the floor, it's going to be Plumley stepping up to apply pressure on the Chris. He's going to see two, and Chris is going to get off of it quick because, as you see, the flight of the pass, as he stretches the defense with his skip, is automatically a three-verse-two on the rotations, against the rotations, excuse me, from the Charlotte Hornets. So on the catch from a kill, he's automatically seeing that it's only one person in front of him and then there's one person in the corner to defend Cam Johnson and Torrey Craig. So again, just like on the last play, they're going to see another timely and astute pin in the screen here from Torrey Craig, accompanied by a shake from Cam Johnson, and he knocks that down as cash. All right, and on this next one here, we're going to see just a very simple one of the Suns' um, traditional and base sets and actions here in the half court, just their elbow cross screen action out of horns. But we're going to see what the difference when it's Cam Johnson is that you try to duck under here after knowing the scouting report and trying to cheat the play and jump to the next side. We're going to see McGowan's try to jump under the screen and meet Cam on the second side. Cam is, is a, he's a shooter. He knows how to use screens. And there's automatic, um, there's just automatic reactions to when you get specific types of defense to, defenses to be applied off ball. McGowan's elects to go under here to try to beat him and meet him on the second side. So Cam calmly flares back, kind of veers back here into a nice wide open look here from deep with his feet set. And then the next play here, this is the very next possession for the Suns. They go back into the elbow action. As you can see, McGowan is already loading up to kind of get over the screen uh, after learning this lesson and being burned last time. But the counters within the Suns' half-court offense is going to be what's on display here. As last time, it was supposed to be their elbow cross-screen action. He ends up going under. This time, he goes over, and he's, again, being anticipatory with his defense. Ends up being out of position as the Suns flow into, like, a double screen of 77 here out of their elbow action. So now McGowan's is completely out of position, as well as Terry Rozier, as Cam Johnson goes to set the first screen in the double, in the double screen action. And now there's no one even going to really be on the ball here for Chris Paul as he gets past the second screen from Biombo. So now it's a two-on-one here, but that's going to be exacerbated by Terry Rozier, who's on the switch after McGowan's fumbled it on the switch to Cam Johnson. He leaves Cam 
to try to what looks like tag Bismack Biombo as Chris drags two of McGowan's on the trail and Mason Plumley in the drop trying to contain the ball. He Terry Rozier goes, it looks like to try to tag Bismack Biombo from the high eye. And but you're leaving the best shooter in the building and one of the hottest shooters at the moment wide open. And Chris astutely recognizes the extra attention given to the pick and the roll. Hits the pop man. And Cam Johnson knocks that down. That's another one. That's cash. And, you know, he just he's just going about it. He's just such a cool customer. He just gives a not that not not bad look. Uh just just going about his business with a very business like approach. Um, no extras, no no celebrating, just getting the business done. I didn't know this next one here we're gonna see. Something I like to see from Cam Johnson, especially in the half court, and especially not when plays are set and it's just kind of controlled chaos from the Suns. Um, just playing basketball, no sets and no direct actions. Is when he goes up to the ball and he just kind of ghosts. Because he can set screens and when he does, they're effective. But however, also when he ghosts, it almost always gets a reaction out of the defense at the mesh point of a switch. Um, especially from defenses that communicate um, at a lot less frequency um, or a lot less effectively than they need to to defend the Suns. So he goes here, you see the initial reaction that gets his Terry Rozier is kind of out of position. However, they don't get anything out of that. It's just it's just kind of their re-space. So as they get into their next set, they're going to go ahead and go pick and roll here, and we're going to see one of Cam Johnson's dynamics on display again. So Chris comes off the screen. He gets a little extra attention here and gets off it quick. However, as that happens, Cam Johnson, again, playing behind the screen, one of the best things he does in the half court. As Dennis Smith Jr. kind of steps over to Biombo on the roll, as you can see from the nail, he just kind of shakes a little bit. And then one of the best dynamics in his game is the counter to the spacing and the threat that he is as a shooter. And that's getting into attacking closeouts with one, two, and three dribble pull-ups from the mid-range. Not necessarily going all the way to the basket, but kind of getting to that soft point in the defense to where you can get a nice little pull-up in, in rhythm. And that's exactly what he does here. Three dribbles into the pull-up going to his left, and he knocks that down. And then one of the most underrated things about Cam is his defense. He's a great team defender, but he's also a very good individual defender as well, especially defending off of rotations. And that's what we're going to see here in the half court is the Suns do a good job containing the ball early in the shot clock. They get a paint touch, and they kick it out, and Cam's in rotation. He's in closeout and recover on Dennis Smith Jr. He does a good job of on the closeout, not getting too far out, but just enough to make him put the ball on the ground. And then I want to look at the finer details here as his lateral quickness is on display, but also his understanding of positioning and the angle he's taking, the chosen angle to get back into the play here. Cut Dennis Smith Jr. off and also do that with hand activity and also not fouling and getting a good contest up on the ball here. This was just a great play out of rotation from Ken Johnson on the defensive side of the ball here. And then, of course, he grabs a rebound, and now it's going to be a sequence that started with him, and it's going to be finished with him. All earned. Just a great play from Cam right there. All right, and on this final play, we're going to see this is something that's important because, uh, first of all, Mikael Bridges brought the ball to the floor after some pressure was applied to Chris Paul. So this was an important thing as they weren't fighting pressure. They were just playing, playing off of the pressure given. And then he was heavily denied. Chris Paul was here from Terry Rozier. So, again, instead of fighting pressure, it's going to come back to him. He goes ahead and they step up into some Chicago action. He goes down screen into a dribble handoff. There's nothing really there for Kogi to turn the corner. Good defense from Charlotte there. So as they respace and they reset, it's going to be an empty side pick and roll here from Chris Paul with Bismack Biombo. Chris is going to again see two. And just like we talked about in the opening plays, he gets off of it very quickly before the rotations can even get set in place. But however, shift your attention to the two closest defenders to the pick and roll outside of Plumlee and Terry Rozier. We're going to see McDaniels and Washington both on the on that block and on the elbow on the strong side of the pick and roll. This is all what Chris is seeing. As he sees Plumlee stepping up, he's looking to see where the help is and automatically stretches the defense out with a timely and accurate skip pass. That's going to then allow for a plus one from Josh Okogie to hit it over to Dario Saric, gets his puppies in order, and he knocks down.